Church, it is Pastor Corla here, and I'm really delighted to be here with you today on this homecoming day. Welcome home. Know that your church family all throughout the world, frankly, and throughout the Southwest Metro, throughout Prior Lake and Shakopee and Savage and all of the places that we join this worship service together, we are celebrating together that there are more and more opportunities to be together with one another. The ways that we have learned about over the past year have certainly not gone away. We continue to worship with one another in, in ways like this, through YouTube and through recorded digital worship services that truly do keep all of us safe. And we are celebrating today that there are more and more opportunities to be worshiping in various ways that include in-person gathering. 
So know that if you are watching this worship service at home digitally or wherever you find yourself uh, watching this worship service and participating that way, know that you are joined by your church family in person at Shepherd of the Lake in the building uh, with a, a homecoming homecoming celebration today. Um, and we are so thrilled. We are so glad that you are joining us in whatever form that takes today. And we're glad to worship together. As we begin our worship, I would invite you to take a moment, to take a breath, and to remember that you are a beloved child of God. To remember that one of the things that ties us together is telling the truth. Telling truths that are easy, like the depth of God's love, and telling truths that are related to that love, but sometimes harder. Sometimes those are the things that we bring to God in as we pray prayers of confession, knowing, always knowing, that when we go to God in prayer, that when we go to God confessing our sin, that God's mercy and forgiveness and love are always more than enough for whatever we bring to that space, whatever we bring to that encounter with God. God's mercy is more than enough. So now we join our hearts and our voices. The words of the prayer of confession will be on the screen, um, the ones that you are invited to join with your church family to read. And I will bring us into that prayer time together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are known, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Family in Christ, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and in the shared presence of one another. Gracious God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Church, hear this good news. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. And together the people of God say, Amen. Just a flame, your 
The scripture for this day is read from Paul's writing to the people of Corinth, the second letter, the fourth chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. Paul is writing to common people living with struggle and the Holy Spirit and the experience of the resurrection. And he is giving them comfort and advice and encouragement. These words now come down to us with the same intent. Just as we have the same spirit of faith in accordance with the scripture, quote, I believed and so I spoke, unquote. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake so that grace as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. 
For we know that if the earthly body we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The scripture for this day. So grace and peace to each one of you this day in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a glorious Sunday. It's the first Sunday in June. We begin our series on common people. This is also the Sunday of our first really big celebratory worship service here in the worship center. So as you join us digitally today, I welcome you into the fullest fellowship of Shepherd of Lake once again. It is great to be with you. And these words from Paul speak so clearly to our hearts and our present day situation as we, common people, in our common everyday life, have the same set of questions that the people of Corinth did. How are the struggles of my life connected with the resurrection? And is the resurrection a one-time experience for some day far away? Or is the resurrection a present-day experience that renews us each and every day? So Paul writes this, We have the Spirit and we know the resurrection. Therefore, we believe and we speak. Well, I think those are excellent, encouraging words for you and me as well. As people of Jesus, people of the way of Jesus, people of the Holy Spirit, people created in the image of God, we have heard and we have believed, and therefore we speak and we act and we live in the present moment in our everyday lives. So where I want to take you for a minute is, as we begin this series, we're going to be focusing every Sunday on a historical figure or a present-day figure that has been important to the person bringing the message, inspiration and model and example of, of the promises in Scripture for common people like you and me. Where I want to start is with not just one person, but all the people. And it starts with this, which is a question I get regularly is, why did I become a pastor? Well, I grew up active in a church. I had a wonderful church home at All Saints Lutheran Church in Minnetonka, Minnesota. I had people who loved me and surrounded me with a faith. I was a person of faith early in my life, really without um, a lot of question or doubt. Instead, challenges and struggles, yes. When I went to college, I thought I would be a lawyer uh, or maybe go into the Foreign Service or get an MBA. That I, furthest thing from my mind was going to seminary. My home pastor was kind of recruiting me a little bit, but it was a, a year between my junior year and my senior year of college that I took off and worked for Lutheran Youth Encounter and traveled around the East Coast with a small group of people in a van. We lived in a van for a year. We stayed in 75 or more homes throughout the year as we did youth ministry nights, family night programs, Sunday morning worship services, vacation Bible school retreats, um, concerts, all sorts of youth gatherings. And it was in that year where I stayed with common people in their homes, ate at their table, lived with them for a few days at a time, where I really fell in love with Christian community. One morning I woke up and my host was a retired army veteran, a World War II veteran, a tank commander. He had had two tanks shot out from under him from D-Day to the end of the war. He was working at the Aberdeen testing grounds as a um, tank tester in his later part of his military service. He woke me up one morning to the smell of this homemade skillet breakfast that, that, that was his specialty. And we sat at his table and talked about the faith that had been ignited in him during those hard days of World War II and that had become a part of his life. There were all sorts of farm families in, and, and that we stayed with in their farm, and, and we saw the connection. I saw the connection between their faith and their work, and their life and their passion. I saw prayer warriors that had Bibles that uh, were worn through and through on their kitchen table, the place where every morning they spent having devotion and prayer and centering themselves. I found social justice activists that were giving themselves away to their community in all sorts of ways, feeding people, sheltering people, 
working for legislative changes to guarantee people's safety and justice. I saw moms, I saw dads raising children and sharing the faith with them, hoping that their children would find the same hope in Jesus that they found. I encountered church workers that had given themselves away in such a way they never earned a lot of money, but they had a life rich with meaning as they, they were part of a community sharing this walk with Jesus. Busy people who are going through ordinary lives connected with an extraordinary faith. New York City, Baltimore, Philadelphia, rural Pennsylvania, Connecticut, West Virginia, the Upper Peninsula, the Iron Range, farm country, suburbia, urban, all of it. And in it, I saw the power of community, the strength of being community. I saw the witness of community. I saw the insistent, persistent pursuit of, of well-being for all people. I saw the joy in community, the celebration of lives, weddings and baptisms and funerals. I saw it all. It's so beautiful that the bells are ringing right now. It's exactly a perfect symbol of what I found in the church as a young person. And more than anything, I saw the hope in community. That when one struggled, other came, others came around that person and embodied hope. Meals and prayers and friendship and laughter and remembrances and story, all of it brought comfort and unity and community was everything and it changed my life. And I decided to go back to my last year of college, take a few religion classes, get myself ready for a seminary and just see if God was up to something in my life. And I took on seminary as a one-year trial thing, and it led to two, and then three, and then internship, and then graduation. Even after Gretchen and I were married, I wasn't sure I was going to be a pastor for my career until a decade in, when I realized this is what I am called to do. But then why did I stay a pastor? Well, actually, I saw more over time than I ever did when I was 27 or 24, 20, I guess it was 21 when I was on Lutheran Youth Encounter. I realized life is more complicated than I imagined when I was a young person. Not only did I see all the positive things in community, I saw that in the midst of all of that, there was also real suffering and tragedy and heartbreak, sometimes conflict. But what I have seen over the last 30 some years is that there is resurrection. That what we are promised by God is not this life inoculated from hardship. Instead, we find common lives, ordinary lives that are lifted up, that are strengthened, that are contexted, that are, they, that are given meaning because of faith. I've seen daily resurrections. I've seen people recover from addictions and recover from broken hearts and recovered from broken dreams and recovered from broken relationships. All of those things are resurrections. And I have come to know the biblical truth to be true in my life and in my witness of community. And that is that we are promised the Holy Spirit and we are promised resurrection here and now, not just on the by and by, not just after we die. I have seen so many resurrections. That's why I've kept doing this all these years. I'm still totally in love with common people and common lives. But I see how important faith is, how important the movement of the Spirit is, how important resurrections are. Because they give life its fullest dimension, its fullest meaning, its fullest purpose and hope. And let me take a little detour here for a minute. I think Christianity in America is really at crossroads. I think it's been a hard thing to be a Christian in America, not because we are persecuted. And frankly, anybody that tells you the Christian church is persecuted in this culture, I don't know what they see to make that claim. Instead, what I think the real danger of Christianity is in America is that we have conflated patriotism with faith or privilege with faith. 
You see, believing is not a collection of truths that you just simply have an intellectual agreement with. And then you just go on living the life you would have lived, irregardless of your tenets of faith that you have intellectually assented to. Instead, faith is about following Jesus. Faith is about a way of life. Faith is about making choices to follow only Jesus as our deepest identity, our deepest allegiance, our deepest sense of what is true in this world. It is not nationalism. It is not patriotism. It is not politics. It is not centered around a person or an ideology. Instead, it's centered around the risen Christ, Jesus, where he says, come and follow me. I have seen this in common people like you and me. Sometimes people get all kind of worried that they don't have enough theology, that they don't know enough things, that, 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 that somehow they have failed some sort of exam or test about Christianity, when the only thing that is required of us is to live a certain way, to live following Jesus, a life of compassion, of forgiveness, of generosity, radical in nature, not just a little bit of generosity, not just a little bit of compassion, not just to love the people that are easy to love, but instead trying to live a life where we love those that are hard to love, where we forgive where it's hard to forgive, where we trust in the promises of God that we will be healed and made whole where we look for the new life and we look to grow and we look to change and be transformed, not just endorsed. Christianity, its comfort isn't in just saying you can remain the same, that you never have to change, that you never have to challenge an idea or a belief, that you never have to confront a fear. Instead, faith is about transformation, changing our fear into hope, changing our ignorance into knowledge, changing our prejudices into acceptances. And I have seen this here at Shepherd of Lake Lutheran Church. I've seen it in our homes. I've seen it in our neighborhoods. I've seen it in our workplaces, our nursing homes, our schools, our ball fields on the lake. And in this pandemic, you as a community shined because you were willing to follow Jesus even in a difficult time. You see, belief in Jesus over all these centuries have always meant taking him up on the invitation to join him in a new way of living. And I think God is deeply disappointed and we are sadly missing the mark when faith is all in our heads and our words and not in our hearts and in our actions. Because of following in the way of Jesus, people find meaning in life. Because of following in the way of Jesus, people find vocations and not just jobs. Because of faith, people give themselves to making the lives of their neighbors better, all of their neighbors better. Because of faith, people live with open hands and not clenched fists. Because of faith, people don't promote hate, they promote love. Because of faith, people can rise from the ashes of grief, pain, and suffering to find new hope and a new day. Because of faith and resurrection, wounds become scars. Because of faith and resurrection, people find hope in the midst of dying. So, this sermon is about common people like you and me, who've been asked by Jesus one simple thing, come and follow me. And we have set aside all our other allegiances, all our other identities, And we have called ourselves what God has called us, beloved children of God. We have breathed in the spirit of God. And as common as we feel, as ordinary as we feel, those are blessed words. Those don't diminish us, those make us precious. And in the midst of that, we've experienced God's spirit and therefore we believe. And now we speak, we act, we embody the gospel for our neighbor in the present day. If you ever wonder what your children need to see in you, that's it, they need to see you live in the way of Jesus. What does your neighbor need to see? What does the world need to see? They need to see you serve them in the name of Jesus, to embody the life of Jesus. A community of followers of Jesus who were touched by the Spirit, who have come to hear, who have come to speak, and who have come to live the gospel. 
That is what it means to be common people with an uncommon faith. May we celebrate this community of Shepherd Lake Lutheran Church who has experienced the Spirit and who dares to believe and dares to speak here in Scott County and across the world to glorify the name of Jesus Christ and to serve our neighbors everywhere and to be transformed into the likeness of Jesus. Grace and peace to each one of you this day. May you embrace your common life in the name of Jesus who loves you very much in uncommon ways. Amen. We have been given the Spirit, therefore we believe. Lord, help our unbelief. Give us the courage to dream beyond our wildest imagination about what your love could nurture in creation. Give us the strength to support one another in times that try our belief and tug at our understanding of how the world works and our place in it. Give us the humility to know when we've got it wrong and the joy that comes from new ways of understanding just how vast your love for this world is. God of mercy, receive our prayer. We have been given the Spirit, therefore we do not lose heart. In the times and places when it's too hard to have hope, surround us with family, friends, community, strangers who can hold our hope for us until we're ready to pick it back up again ourselves. We lift to you the people on our community prayer list and all the people in particular need of your tenderness today. Give them hope where that is possible. Give them hope bearers where it's not right now. God of mercy, receive our prayer. We have been given the Spirit, therefore we speak. We proclaim. We share the gospel. We pray for the wisdom to know when and where and how to proclaim your good news in all the world. We pray for the words to tell the truth about your love for your whole creation. We pray for your tenderness when we get things wrong in our call to proclaim, and we trust in your grace. God of mercy, receive our prayer. We have been given the Spirit, and it is into your very Spirit's hands, O God, that we offer our prayers, the ones we've said out loud and the ones that remain tucked in the quiet corners of our hearts, trusting that your mercy is always enough. Through Jesus Christ, your child, our Lord. Amen. Church, welcome to the table. Welcome as we gather around this table and as we say in our worship service every week, week in and week out, that this congregation, wherever you are in your journey of faith, welcomes you with open hearts, open minds, and an open table. And we mean that. We mean that this table is a table set for you, where you are the guest because God is the host, where you are invited and there is nothing that you can do. There's nothing that we do to earn that invitation, and there is nothing we can do to lose that invitation because it is God who invites us to this table to share this feast of love offered by God, God's own self. And so we pray together, the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks for the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Church, we remember that on the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. Take and eat. Do this for remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Living in trust and hope, we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Church, the table is set. Your place is prepared. Join your family in Christ. Join your family of beloved, created people of God at this table. Know that it is not Shepherd of the Lake's table. It's not the ELCA's table. It's not anyone's table but God's. God sets this table and you are invited to join the feast. Taste and see and know that God is good. Wherever you're joining us from this morning, if you are worshiping with other folks worshiping with you, feel free to serve one another now with whatever you have serving as the body of Christ and whatever you have serving as the blood of Christ, God truly here with you in these elements. You can serve one another and you can say, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you're like me and you worship in your home on your own on Sunday mornings, hear these words and know that they are true. That this is the body of Christ and it is given for you. And that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Church, we gather as people who care deeply for each other, who care deeply for proclaiming the good news of God's love in the world. And we do that in so many ways. And in a moment, we're going to have a video that talks a little bit about what is going on in the life of this congregation. And it's fun to get excited about all of the ways that we serve God and serve our neighbors together in Scott County as a congregation that is part of a wider community. And I would invite you to remember as well that there are so many ways to be involved and to give of yourself to this congregation. Some of the events and activities and programming that is going to be in the announcements is a huge part of that. We give of our time, we give of our wisdom, our mentorship, our relationships, our praise. And there are ways that we also give financially to the congregation to support those ministries and support one another in our journey together. All of the information that you're about to hear about in these announcements and all of the information on how to give financially to the congregation can be found on the church website, solc.org. The Shepherd of the Lake Children, Youth, and Family Team is excited to share our 2021 summer program opportunities for all ages. Here are just a few ministries that you can be a part of this summer through CYF. Experience the joy and wonder of God's creation through the eyes of your children through Great Outdoor Explore. This fun and faith-filled class is for caregivers and their zero to five-year-old children. Our Youth Choir's National Anthem video will be featured on the big screen at Target Field during the Twins game on Sunday, July 25th. All are welcome. For families with middle school and high school students looking for service outlets, there is a Summer Serve, a monthly opportunity for preparing groceries for neighbors experiencing food insecurity, as well as a student garden project happening in our very own community garden right here at Shepherd of the Lake. Visit solc.org slash event to learn more about these and other happenings in our community. As you go from this worship service, take this blessing with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve God's world. Thanks be to God. For the city, for the world we pray. Let your light shine down, come around and live in us For the close and the far away And the churches and the 